Hi everyone, we're back today with Olivia, who's our specialist occupational therapist at Guys, who works for, with our patients who are having oncology treatment for brain tumours. So we're going to talk a bit today about what happens when you've gone through your surgery, through your oncology treatment, your radiotherapy, your chemotherapy, and you start to feel a bit stronger, and you might want to think about going back to work. So Olivia, I don't know if you could just run us through maybe some things that people talk to you about when they're coming to you to discuss going back to work, some of their concerns or things that they're worried about? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that, you know, sometimes when pe when patients come, they there's not a lot of planning of what happens with work once they've had surgery. Everything happens so quickly. So sometimes they haven't had an opportunity to kind of discuss things with work or anything like that. And everything happens so quickly that they just abruptly left so I think it's very important when things settle down that you do make contact with your employer just to kind of discuss and say, this is what's happening. You don't need to give too much information. You just need to give the basic information, but to have an open communication with your employer so that they know what's happening and that you might be off work for quite a bit of time. I think some of the other big um, questions that I get asked in the clinic is also, will I be able to cope with going back to work? You know, and and that is that stems more from um, fatigue and how patients are managing the fatigue during treatment and even after treatment, radiotherapy, and even when they start with chemotherapy, because the expectation is they know how they were coping with their work. And when they think about how they are managing the fatigue now, would they be able to kind of go back at that level of work? Absolutely. And I and I think, you know, when someone has been maybe in a very busy job and all of a sudden, bam, they've been given a brain tumor diagnosis, like you say, it does happen very quickly. And they they've yeah. been given often a very devastating diagnosis and they possibly think, oh, I could never go back to work. But yeah. we're very encouraging of people to go back to work, can't we? And I guess yeah. maybe maybe you could think of some of the tell us about some of the things that you discuss with patients about how they could think about work and what adjustments they could make before they start having those conversations with work. I think the important thing is always to kind of have a good understanding of what your fatigue looks like and how you are managing your fatigue. And I think in our team, we kind of do a lot of intervention with regards to fatigue, because if you know how you are managing your fatigue, when you are feeling better, when you are most fatigued, what are the kind of activities that makes you tired? That will give an indication of what your working hours potentially might look like. It will look at um, what um, activities or what responsibilities you can take. The, the big thing is obviously every patient is individual because we've got a variety of jobs and the responsibilities. And that also needs to keep into consideration. Some patients have a lot of cognitive fatigue where they get tired when they spend a lot of time in front of the computer. So a lot of, and some patients have like a lot of manual work where that might not be suitable for them. So it's very specific for each and every patient. And I think it is a discussion that you need to have with your rehab team or your occupational therapist or whoever that you are busy in rehab with, just to kind of have a discussion around how you are managing now, this is what your job responsibilities are, and then trying to get an idea of where are you at the minute, at the moment with getting back to work. If you are not managing your day-to-day -day things within your home environment, it would be very difficult for you to kind of travel to work and be able to go back to work. So you need to kind of be able to do a lot of your responsibilities within the home environment so that you say, OK, well, I've, I'm able to do that now. I can take on more. And I think sometimes people forget that even if you work at a desk and they think, oh, well, I'm physically don't do much day to day in my job. I could definitely just go back and sit at my desk. But it's like you say, that fatigue of the mental processing of using yeah. the computer, picking up the telephone, writing an email when another email comes in. How do you pick up all of these things at the yeah. same time? Yeah, it doesn't mean you can't do it. Hey, we we exactly. We, there's and that's what ways. we teach people. That's what we teach people about taking frequent breaks, being able to identify what are the things that makes you tired, and then knowing how do you plan your day so that you're able to do the things that you want to do. I always encourage patients to go back to work. You know, like yeah. 
and there's always a way even if if you if you can discuss with your manager and it's always good to go through your occupational health of your hr department so that there's somebody there that can support you through the process it's important to kind of start with a graded return to work you know because as we know you you don't know how you're going to feel and it's sometimes quite challenging for employers if you start with, I'm going to go full time back and then to say, OK, I'm actually not coping to reduce the hours. Start with a graded return to work and then see how you manage. If things go well and you feel you can do a bit more, you can gradually increase your hours. But this needs to be with somebody that is either supervising you or your occupational health. And they are like monitoring you over a period of time. Absolutely. And so I guess... Coming on to maybe we could just talk about a few tips for employers. So some some things that generically we could say to support anyone that's gone through brain surgery in general or any kind of treatment to the brain that may help. Like we said, it's all very individual and this is not a clear cut rule, but maybe there's some things that employers could think about that would be helpful yeah. for patients who do have a brain tumour to get back into the workplace. Yeah, I think sometimes it's very challenging because not not a lot of employers have dealt with patients that had brain tumors and immediately they like, oh, I'm not sure whether this person can come back. And I think it's important for them to kind of educate themselves a little bit about brain tumor treatment, surgery, just read up a little bit. There's a lot of information on the internet. We can always advise you what websites to use. Um, the Brain Tumor Charity also has a lot of information on there for, for employers as well. And, and the other thing, the thing is also what what is reasonable adjustments look like for this particular employer? What are you able to support this person with? The other thing is also are you be able to be flexible with time? Can this person work from home? And ask the your staff member what do they think will be the best for them? How do they think they'll be able to manage their work responsibilities? And how would the return to work look like and that would then start the conversation I think the important thing is also to be mindful that sometimes they might be they might need to attend appointments they might need to have some treatment and is there any flexibility within the work environment for them to continue to do these things and the other big thing is obviously fatigue they will get tired they will need to have some breaks and is there flexibility within the work environment to support them with that? I think a lot of patients are very keen to get back to work. They need to get back to work for their own mental health, fin financially, and also just for themselves, because it also makes them feel motivated to kind of get better, get back to doing the things that they used to do before. Absolutely. And just a final thing to say is that we are always happy as a clinical team to speak obviously with the permission of the person that we are looking after we are always happy to speak to their employer to give them any advice or write any letters or anything so I think to just speak to your clinical team if you've got any questions about work and we will help guide guide that yeah I think that's all oh yeah anything else to say <laughs> no I think I think it's always good to have a conversation before you start work just so that you can plan things um, before the time and not just rush into work and then you haven't planned things and then things get a little bit uh, more challenging as time goes on. Absolutely. Good communication. Yeah. Always. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening um, and we'll be back soon with another top tips. Thank you.